Hi, David. Nice to reconnect. Um, we've, how long have we no, known each other? Like through IFF, I think it was 2008, 2009, around that time when we first... Uh, it's got to be something like 10 or 11 years, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we, I remember meeting at Bioneers, outside Bioneers and having a chat, and that, that must have been 2009. Uh, but yeah, nice nice wow. to reconnect. Um, it's, <laughs> and um, for... A while now, I've been just so super busy that that I keep people tell me about the collab and say, "Wow, excellent!" David Hodgson had put put this nice um, collab on um, regenerating the Earth together. Um, and on the one hand, I feel bad that I haven't joined it yet, but I don't really know that much about it. Um, but people speak highly of it. Can you can you tell me a bit more about how it came about and and what what the vision for it is? Yeah. Um... Well, like, like you, uh, it, it came about because, like you, Daniel, I'm, I, I, I like to uh, talk to lots of interesting people um, working on regenerative, and I'm particularly interested in regenerative activity. Uh, so I'd ended up over the years building out quite a network of folks, um, and I was finding that I spent, I was spending too much of my time. <laughs> just make it, talking to people and then making lots of introductions um, to connect them together. Uh, and as a result, and every, every time I bump into that situation, I'm like, uh, you know, is there, an, is, there an easier, is there an easier way to, to do this that doesn't take up quite as much of my time in just sending emails? Um, so I, I, I figured in about September last year that I should just try putting people together in a, a Slack channel. Um, actually, it was, I, I, I kind of started in June of last year with a few people, but then, you know, across the summer, um, we, uh, yeah, uh, it's very hard to get anything done in the, in the summer months, um, just because everybody's all over the place or <laughs> well, last year everybody was all over the place not going to be quite the same this year obviously um and so really i think of it starting sometime around september so yeah we i just started inviting people along to slack um and running you know a variety of zoom conversations uh group conversations i just you know one or two a week i just send out an invite going hey you know this per and I, at the time I was doing it around specific members, I think, um, and then I would, you know, play around with various Zoom facilitation breakouts and whatever else to get people into small group conversations. So I was just playing around with different facilitation formats, and uh, yeah, people people seem to really enjoy getting, you know, meet, meeting one another and getting to know one another. Um, and so over the last six, seven months, I guess now, uh, yeah, that's, that's got to the point where we've got about 250 people in it, um, from, you know, technologists, finance people, um, people running projects on the ground in various different, uh, locations, uh, Borneo, Peru, um, here in the U S, uh, how, how, in Europe. how do I have to imagine like the actual those people getting together you use there's there are conversations going on in, in the slack on the slack platform and then do you have zoom calls with everybody or um how, how do you get together it's very you know op open space so um you know, right now we're running about five or six zoom calls a week um and you know i've got a team of uh six is it five of us one, two, one, two, three, four, five, seven. seven, seven of us uh, who are kind of taking responsibility for running different conversations. So we uh, yeah, have a variety of different conversations and it's very much send a thing out and, you know, see, see who shows up for a given thing. Um, and so out of the 200 or so folks, calls vary between about, you know, small intimate things with about three people up to groups with 20 to 30 people and we do you know, we're kind of action oriented so it's there's, there's there's some calls that are just designed to mix people up but other ones are very much focused on 
okay, we've identified this problem in, uh, in, in, in enabling regeneration, regenerative activity. Okay, let's get together and brainstorm things that collectively could be done, we could do, that would try and help solve that problem. And we kind of refer to those as, well, either collabs or missions, um, when it's much more, and admissions, so collab is much more a creative kind of conversation, whereas a mission is much more of a, okay, here's a thing, let's get together and see how we can move that thing mm -hmm. forward in the world. And I think, like I spoke with Nenad about this, is, is Nenad one of the people helping you um, organize the, uh, yeah. he, he's done that really well with Ecolis and other European networks using Zoom quite creatively to, to kind of break out rooms and all that. Um, yeah, Nenad's awesome. <laughs> you no, know, he's, he's really a, a servant to the movement and many, like also spanning across movements, which is great. Um, um, I mean, that's what, it's, it's interesting. I hadn't really clicked that this is your response to the, the big conundrum that, that weavers like us um, tend to have, that we're constantly like trying to stay in touch with such a broad network and wanting to, because that, it, there's nothing more joyful than connecting two people that need to do work together um, and can do stuff that no one of them could do alone. Um, but at the same time, it gets a bit tedious when, when you find that half of your um, week's work or more um, is in that and um, somehow there's no no financial flux into supporting that kind of activity. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it can eat up. It can eat up one hundred percent of your time quite easily. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I, I I looked at the website you put together over the weekend. looks looks nice as a general sort of introduction landing page. Um, and the the proposition that this whole network now could be deployed to help people with specific problems in specific places. Um, is, that's the really the cent central offer. Is that right? Or can you say a bit more about that? Yeah, that is, that's a, that's nice and succinct, Daniel. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the, uh, the proposition. Um, because, I mean, what I was, what I, what I was observing, or at least, I was having so many conversations with so many people, and in every conversation, in every conversation, uh, you know, people running different types of projects, you know, some software projects trying to create platforms that support stuff or on the ground projects. And everybody, you know, everybody always has needs, I've noticed, you know, no, I've never yet, I don't think I've yet found a project that is entirely smooth sailing, right? Yeah. And half of it, and that's why I end up connecting people together. It's just because, oh, you're trying to do that and you're having a problem. I know these people you should talk to. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's a that's a. Uh, I need to get you as my copywriter, Daniel. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I remember that, that it was you who, when when I um, when I had just published my book, or maybe even just before it came out, you you mentioned because because it has the word designing regenerative cultures, like the designing cultures in it. You said, "Have you heard of this guy, Joe Brewer?" And I said, "Maybe." Not really, and 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 then you um, put me in touch with Joe, and, and I I learned more about his work, and um, now he's like, do you know? Have you been in touch with the process he just started? Is it parallel, complementary? How is it? How is it different? Um, because I, I, it's another one of those where I feel like cool, cool initiative, nice people. I'm sure focused on the right mission, the great work of our times, um, and you can't be on every Zoom call um, that is out there. <laughs> it's, good, it's good that we have that problem now. That wasn't the problem 10 years ago um, when That's I first cool. met you. Uh, yeah, Joe, so Joe, I, Joe joined. I, I, I hadn't talked to Joe in, I guess, last time. I, I was talking to Joe a bit last year, and then we kind of reconnected again just a few, about a month ago, um, actually. Uh, so he's he's now joined GRC, and you know I just see, you know this is why the word collab is in there, right? Mm. I just see all of these things as being interrelated. You know, it's a it's a network of people doing initiatives, and the more you can 
interconnect that network mm -hmm. at the end of the day the, uh, in a, in, you know in a pretty uh in an action-oriented fashion the more good stuff will happen um it, 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 if i if i could have an entity that didn't have a name i'd probably have an entity that <laughs> didn't have a name because it's really about all the great work that everybody else is but, trying to move forward right um but and when, when we the, the, the last times we spoke you were also very active in the space of trying to get people um together that we're all trying to find new vehicles for investment or um, bringing finance to large landscape restoration like large-scale ecosystems restoration and, and, and regenerative activity in that space and um, is that somehow still linked with that same collab initiative um, and and that, that's why I was asking also about Joe because Joe seems to be building some kind of um, investment platform for regeneration and, and I was wondering whether they are somehow linked um, so yeah you know finance is a <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit it's a big challenge within these things um and so we've got a whole bunch of interesting you know in the way i yeah got a whole bunch of interesting finance people um in the network who are working on a whole bunch you know quite quite a wide range of different initiatives to try to figure out how to move more capital into uh in, in an appropriate in a regenerative fashion, right? That's Into regenerative activity. A tricky bit. Uh, yeah, because you know the, the standard relationship with capital, uh, <laughs> as we as we all know, can be a bit um, extractive. So there's a need for all sorts of uh, transformation to occur uh, to set that up well. So it's definitely one of the core areas of inquiry. Um, and so, yeah, in that context, yeah, Joe's current initiative around this mm. um, fund that he's trying to set up, or that he is in process of setting up and uh, focused, well, uh, he was talking about, I mean, he's in Colombia currently, yeah. um, but I'm not sure whether he's thinking about it just in the, fully in the context of Colombia or more broadly, you know, like, like most of these early stage ideas, right? It's in the mm. evolutionary, um, process of you put a thing out there start to get people talking about it you engage people and then what becomes possible um you know you start to see possibilities that you didn't see before um so i think he, he's somewhere in that rapid developmental cycle right now around that um but yeah this question of uh, unlocking i mean both phil and you know philanthropic and other types of capital to enable yeah, regenerative activity, especially the convening piece, right? The, at least one of the key areas that I'm about to try and unlo unleash the, uh, the community around is this question of how do you support, you know, what's the right business model? How do you support this, early, you know, people who are bringing together the regional networks in that early stage before there's, that generate the projects and the opportunities where you need blended finance to but, come in, but that early stage is really hard to get funded, right? Yeah, it is, but it, but it's it's so interesting because like if you take for ex for example the the project that that I sort of wove you in with and that you probably now in touch with more than I am, and um, the Regenerosity Network, uh, um, that kind of initially was was basically an idea that grew out of the dissatisfaction with not being able to give all the amazing runner-ups on the lush spring prize um some prizes because they all deserved money to run their amazing regenerative projects all over the world or both in social and ecological regeneration and that's when 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 back then i first thought wait a minute the same situation must be the case for the buckminster fuller challenge i also thought about the biomimicry design challenge um and, and a number of other um of these beautiful kind of prize winning challenges but but then in talking with with david mccombo we we very quickly got to this like 
could they be redesigned in such a way that they're not zero sum games that they're not about winners and losers and how how would you do that and that that was my initial kind of starting point for 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 helping to to launch that conversation and it's kind of evolved and while it still has this vision of showcasing amazing regenerative projects that have been vetted through both the um either the, the lush spring prize or the buckminster fuller challenge initially um showcasing them to the world showcasing them to each other showing that the movement is much larger than we all thought is even possible and um also showcasing them to anybody who wants to learn either from those projects but also who wants to um support them and um that part i really like but then when we when we kind of started talking more in the in the california environment uh -huh. it very quickly brought in these other types of impact investment and other monies and i and ever since then it's just a feeling of of mine that i, I felt that, that the initial power of this project of really showcasing vetted on the ground place sensitive place sourced initiatives not initiatives Dev, and this this is where, where i, I, I want to challenge you just for mutual learning this idea that you can have 250 people who are all committed mean well no shit lots of stuff sort of come in as the expert team to a specific location and a specific problem that is really about that biocultural uniqueness of that bioregion and that particular place and that they can generate a hell of a lot of really useful stuff in a bunch of hackathons online or even in place well it's probably a both and i'm not saying that they wouldn't generate a lot of really useful stuff but my big question with it is if really re-inhabiting place and redesigning the human impact on place and planet from the ground up co-creatively is so much about being place sourced and sensitive to the local ecosystem how big is the role of the external expert in in that um do you, do you see what i'm getting at that's a good question um yeah and i i mean i so uh, i mean it, uh, i think it goes to your uh, is it, I mean, not, uh, I mean, other people have used the word local uh mm -hmm. too right but i think it goes to this um concept of local where these you know a regional thing you know right now most of our attention is focused at this macro or you know gl globalization right and especially financial globalization is this giant abstraction floating in the clouds that is not embedded in place mm -hmm. at all and so it engages with place in a way that is very Incent is absolutely insensitive to the uh, to the bio, you know, to all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> Both like the, locally, regionally, and globally, making it. Yeah, up. It's, you know, it's, it's it's just detached from reality at a certain level, right? Um, so I absolutely agree that we, you know, the 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 new pattern that we're looking at is strongly place based. Is strongly place sourced was that the phrase you used uh, mm -hmm. something like that um where it is people in the you know a network a community of people in that place with auto with self-determination going here's what uh, needs to be you know here's what we think as as the inhabitants of this place is the right thing to be doing mm -hmm. it will still be embedded in some kind of um it, you know it's we do, each one of those nodes of activity places <laughs> nodes of activity each one of those places is still part of a larger system is still going to be part yeah. of a larger yeah. system um at least is, is my uh is what i would posit i don't think we want to entirely have those things divorced from having any kind yeah. of interconnectivity right Completely and agree with you there. What uh, you know, what, and what I would say is that, and often in some of those places, that kind of 
those there are pockets of expertise that aren't necessarily present in many of those places that allow you know whether it's a certain kind of yeah, but this is this is where I find that this logically this makes per perfect sense to me, and th this is where I find the distinction sometimes with people who are like in the visioning stage of we want to bring a local network together and work with this entire region to become regenerative, and we've got a really cool team of people that are very committed, and we're going to make this the regen region. Yeah, and um, it's great, and that what what I just feel like from my experience of having seen this first move out from the little nucleus that was the Findhorn Eco Village and trying to work with the Morishire region more and, and undo some of that bubble effect that happened when, when the Eco Village was first, first formed and really start, it was actually called the Building Bridges Program, um, working with the local communities and, and, and the local government and so on. Like I, I brought, when I worked for Findhorn College, it was the regional government that funded my job and that was a kind of precedent for how the community started to work with the regional funding bodies. Yeah? And the same here on Mallorca, like coming down, starting with education, doing a um, eco-village design education program in 2011 that, that, that really built community here. Um, but then the crisis that started in 2008 really hit Spain in 2011-12 badly. Um, and and so that kind of fissured that initial community a little bit, but lots of really cool projects started and so on. But what, what I'm getting at is I've been slowly trying to do this work. And when it gets down to the real cultural identity of a place, then just from my ex personal experience, and that's where I'm sort of responding from, um, things like, like I remember when somebody told me in, two years into being on Mallorca, a Mallorcan told me, don't be quite so visionary. This can all be done and let's do it now and waving your arms around because it just doesn't land with the local culture very well. Yeah? You, you, you gesticulate too much. I still do that. And, <laughs> and, 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 he, and he also said to me, don't burn out because I would love your impulses to, to be, to, to ground on this island. But you have to actually think of it that most of the people here if you're still here in 10 years time, they will start to listen to you. And what you do in between is just as important that you don't burn out in the process than that you do a few things that establish you as somebody who's committed to, to wanting to contribute and serve a larger whole. And that was the best piece of advice I ever got uh -huh. um, in terms of working locally. And so I don't walk around and spout big, sort of I am regenerating Mallorca, blah, 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 because it, it's a very slow process. Uh, it's, um, it's a, and, and the more you communicate it, the more danger you actually create of it backfiring on you because you're actually nurturing and doing social acupuncture and weaving connections. And like, for example, that the stuff that I did with, with Ecovair, bringing Ecovair on Mallorca to experiment with a regional biomaterials economy. Yeah. Um, we never went into mass production of floor cleaner or hand soap or any of the products we were playing around with. But we pulled together a network of people from a university in Barcelona that was testing biomaterials that we sent them from Mallorca. And the local chemical, um, the, the, the guy who had previously imported chemicals and mixed them together to make eco detergents on the island was looking at how can I find these resources more locally uh, and another guy who had a perfumery was bringing in local scents from um, lemon and rosemary and, and in the process because they all saw their piece in a very systemic design puzzle that was actually looking at cascading resources through the biomaterials economy and closing loops and all those kind of things even using satellite data to in real time, look at what's growing on Mallorca to know what the harvest will be, to know what um, waste you will have. Well, we never got to all of it in real, but by talking about it and bringing everybody together on a real project, it trained people to think in that way. And that has had ripple effects. So there's a lot more people now thinking in circular economy in biomaterials terms than they were before. And, and I'm just telling this story as an example of how 
we we also ran with Forum for the Future some sort of event where a bunch of expert consultants from Forum for the Future were here and the head guy from innovation from Equiware was here. And it generated a buzz and a reason to meet. But those aren't the things that really regenerate a region, these kind of bringing in the expert teams. In, in my experience, they, they just set impulses. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with anything you just uh, said. Uh, so the, uh, yeah, I mean that, it's, it's more about the cross, I mean, I think about it more in the terms of cross pollination, especially amongst the, yeah. humming you know, the labs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought you that it was a really nice way of n naming your activity because you, you are like uh, whether it's a oh, weaver, hummingbird, really. butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, if that, and, and that work of exactly what you're describing, I mean, that's a, uh, uh, an, an, an ec ec excellent elucidation. Uh, I think that's the right word. Sorry. That's too, too good. I should try and use simpler words sometimes. Um, of the process that, you know, hopefully that is unfolding in many different locations where there are people uh, who are attempt, you know, who are doing exactly the work you just described, right? In that place of, and I was talking to a friend of mine who's up in, which is uh, up at the University of Oregon, I think it was up in Oregon. And she's been doing similar convening there bringing together you know bringing together the old you know members of the old logging families that are there along with you know city representatives along with whatever else to start you know within some kind of framing around oh let's just start to step back a little bit and look at this place we are in a different way and start to have these conversations about the future and what could be possible and you know and they i think kate rayworth came in and did a donut economics lab as part of that mm -hmm. process and you know and that's good right it gives a it, it, it just provides some extra inputs into the place-based creative process yeah. of i mean that's it's not about you know doing exactly the thing and going these experts will tell you what to do but they they do, you know, it's like having you come in and give a keynote mm. <laughs> speech or whatever it is somewhere. Mm. It adds a lot of value because suddenly people go, well, that's an interesting way of thinking. I've not thought about things in quite that way before. Yeah. Um, and it just enrich it, you know, the, the goal is to enrich the creative conversation so that thing, you know, people start to just go, oh, that's interesting. It's not about the yeah that's these are people who know what to do right it's uh, hey let's think about these things in a creative way together and we just see where we get to um yeah I, I i like it so much better that way um like communicated that way it, it, it like because there's always this slight and it is sorry i mean you're not american but you live in america but it's this, this sort of <laughs> american oversell of, of would bring the expert together and like even even the framing like i as much as I feel that regeneration is bigger and broader and more diverse than only the valuable and important lineage of um, Carol Sanford and Regenesis, but but in honoring a sum of that lineage, like the simple approach of um, starting from, we have a team, you have a problem, we find solutions. Yeah? Um, one of the kind of, phrases central to that way of working regeneratively is you, you start from potential and you don't start from problems yeah? and pot i i like in what you're not describing um rather than kind of expert team comes and solves your problem but more expert team comes and gives you more multi-perspectival from multiple intelligences and multiple expert disciplines perspective on your situation and asks you questions like i mean that's why in the end 
as vague as, as some people get frustrated that designing regenerative cultures and that I constantly just ask questions rather than say I have an answer uh, and, and they, they, they kind of go somewhere else because they want answers. Uh, but, but I find that answers are a bit arrogant. Like um, it's the, pr the answer lies in the process of questioning together. And, th and that's what you were just describing. Uh, and I, th I think that's more humble. It's more participatory. It's more engaging. I, I, I love, I love like Kate and I and, and Nora and a group of people were talking about taking what she's developed with Portland and with Pittsburgh and with Amsterdam, which now Amsterdam has taken on just recently, it was in The Guardian, how are they, they're now a donut city and so on. Um, but I love that process that she co-developed with Janine Benyus, um, the thriving places methodology. And she, we were sort of, had this not happened with, with, with COVID and all that, we were exploring bringing a group of people to Mallorca to play with Mallorcans over a number of days on a, using these, like the donut and the citrus and different methodologies, but bringing in Stuart Cohen from, from Capital Institute and Regenerative Communities Network um, and, and my kind of like IFF Three Horizons um, toolkit and all, all that. Um, and expand a little bit from what currently the the, this thriving places methodology is looking at cities and as we both l like to work by regionally that that was my only when 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 kate suggested to like what 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 could we do differently i said well the way to work with cities is to work with it within the regional context so so and and yes it would have been exactly the same thing of some experts internationally renowned like weave in warm data to make people on mallorca bring all of their knowledge about Mallorca in, in, a, in a kind of tr transcontextual data way um, into the room. And um, yeah, so far, so far it's just a dream, um, but it's, it's, it's developing. And I think these, th these processes are super important. Um, so how, um, do um, how do people engage with Colab? If somebody wants to join it, can everybody join or, or you write an application or how does it go these days? <laughs> Um, it's a good question. So, uh, uh, one, one of the things that over the years uh, I've tried to do running these things is that I've noticed that uh, th things work better. Um, I mean, you want a you want a diversity of you want as broad a diversity of creative perspectives as possible um, because that's what leads to creative possibility but uh you know you, one uh, one needs to avoid um too too much dogmatism mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and and certain uh kinds of uh uh ne negative behaviors uh so it is a you know we, we have a we have a boundary around the thing it is a uh, and currently it's primarily through uh referral ish mm -hmm. um and you know there is a contact form on the website uh and you know we 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 uh you know if people reach out and are interested i'm you know we'll, we're more than happy to jump on a call and um have, have a chat with whoever uh which but you know we're a bit bandwidth constrained so that like it may take a while to get back to you. You know, I'm, I'm not going to guarantee a 24-hour response time. Um, and the, yeah, because the goal is, um, yeah, the goal isn't necessarily to grow a really large community, right? That's not the, the where where we're, where where we're heading. Um, it's about people who can play play well together to help. Uh, yeah, cult cultivate the conditions for this uh, a regenerative future to emerge. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if people are interested in being part of this, then just send us a uh, you know send us something through the contact form on the website, and we'll have a chat. Mm. Um, yeah, and because you know the I, I wouldn't say randomness, but what what I've discovered over the last few years is very high levels of serendipity occurring. Right, and so the people, the people who are likely to listen to this, 
going to be very interesting people, at least from my perspective. <laughs> Uh, otherwise they wouldn't be paying if, attention if still, to you if Daniel they're still, if they're still listening after what it is by now I don't know 40 minutes yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> most, most, most people don't have a more than five minutes attention span on on YouTube so um, particularly about ramp two, two people rambling on about how to save the world more effectively um, well in the present yeah. save ourselves um, no, but, but I really appreciate that you, you've pulled that together because it is like, they're all just opportunities. It's the same, like I see it, like Joe's um, kind of working group around the book that he's writing. It's, it's, it's precisely what in this kind of non-descriptive way, when I was saying like throughout designing regenerative cultures runs this theme almost when I read it, I sometimes think maybe I've overdone it a bit because I come back over and over again to this living the questions together, having started with the, the Rilke quote on you have to live the questions. And sometimes you, you can't be given the answers, you actually have to live into them. And um, and I believe that that's exactly what these things are. Uh, they, and they have this global tension of how do we, like there's a number of tensions, just from, again, from my limited perspective that I've, I've identified that um, like one tension for me is, how much energy to put really locally and regionally into the deep relationship weaving that isn't just with the usual suspect, but is really much more in a kind of U lab and all inclusive type process, bringing in like the tourism industry, the, the local whatever, be a delivery company, the local sewage treatment plant, all, all that reality and, and the connected lives behind that, the, the people who want a job and just want to feed their children and, and, and um, have, a, have a relatively, like, don't want to take responsibility for the future of Mallorca. Uh -huh. um, because that is reality as well. And, and so for, for, for me, um, it's really important to engage more with that. But I feel that will take me away from having conversations like the one we're just having right now. Uh, and and like I've, I've had long conversations with Stuart about this, of the role of the regenerative communities network in helping all these different regional initiatives to learn from each other and with each other and the right balance between that learning and exchange and open innovation and maybe even support in, in different ways. And giving them the time to actually do the work locally so they don't disappear in the networking and the reporting back to the global community about something that is going terribly slow because nobody's putting attention there because um and and for me it's always been a bit of attention to working locally it's it's like in iff and three horizons uh, or, or, or um, h3 uni terms it's dilemma navigation like in in the second horizon space we're constantly doing dilemma navigation between stuff that I is kind of um, hospicing the dying system and stuff that is midwifing the new system. And, and, and that's actually necessary um, in, um, to my mind. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it goes back to the, the bridge thing, right? It is, there's, yeah, but somebody, there is that dynamic, that tension you just described. Yeah, you just described so well, uh, Daniel. But yeah, that there is a need, and not everybody bridges. You know, yeah, there, there is high. I believe, at least, there is high value in that particular bridging function um, from the the global bridging function, because it does it allows. You know, it's like a, a cell, right? You don't, again, you know, there, there is nutrient flow through the cell boundary, through the cell wall. If the if that wasn't there, or if the, you know, that, that boundary needs to exist because you need to, otherwise there is no cell there. Um, and you don't want to be in a, um, a uh, you know, and you put a cell in a saline solution or some kind of, gradient right and it just sucks all of the um the water out of the cell and kills the thing so you don't want too much outward flow and you don't want huge inward flow because then the thing 
which just blows up. So it is how do you give yourself, give that thing the appropriate boundary where you've got the right flow of nutrients that makes the system as a whole flourish, right? And so there is, and it's different at different, you know, and it's constantly shifting what you need now and what you need tomorrow and what you need the next day and how you balance those things out. It's a dynamic, it's an ongoing yeah. dance that we have to be continually just going, uh, what's the right thing? You know, what's the balance right now? And I, I, for whatever I, reason I've taken on. <laughs> I like, I like your metaphors, mate. Like both, both yeah. the orga organismic metaphor and the dancing metaphor. That's uh, it's so yeah no it, actually as you were describing it I, I had this idea for I even wrote it down here could could be a poem could be could be an essay um, the osmotic balance of glocal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it is like how much get, do you get sucked out of the system? How do you yeah no it's. But, but that's for me, like it's it's actually speaking to something that like I was saying that there's a couple of pitfalls. There's the, the pitfall or the, the, the dilemma between the global dynamic. Um, then there's a dilemma to my mind that the minute you bring in even well-meaning financier types into these kind of situations, like even like, for example, you're super successful with, with the cola. And suddenly, you some some really big money says, "Yeah, cool. We'll 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 underwrite you, and we'll bring in all this money, and you just go into lo all these locations around the globe, and we're bootstrap and and blah blah blah." Yeah, but but there's plenty of people like that in in the Bay Area. You know that, um, and um, and then you because you're also bringing money, you skew quite a lot of the relationships. To when you come into a local process, uh -huh. you're not just the expert, the global experts that are flying in. You're also bringing money, and and so people are rolling over and playing along a bit because because of that, and 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 that's also possibly dangerous. Uh, um, and so so there's always a there's really like how do we enable finance to flow into regenerative pro projects? Like then very close to that is the whole. All the good people working on 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 holo and 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 other um kind of tokens bitcoin and not bitcoin but but um uh, blockchain based yeah yeah I, I i deeply believe and i know some of the people in those spaces that they're completely committed and doing doing wanting to do good work and wanting to serve and then there's this whole kind of are we enabling are we building infrastructures that will somehow enable a enclosure of um, different types of capital that are currently actually still outside of the e economy like um, real social capital and real natural capital the minute we we monetize it and even though if it's through some kind of other mechanism it becomes really dangerous because then you can what you can get one to one translation into real currencies and, and suddenly you you meant to do well and bring this into a more balanced more holistic economic accounting but in the process you've actually created the monster that enables the monetization of human relationships and bioproductivity and and that's also a bit of a dilemma because on the one hand it serves and on the other hand it doesn't eh? the whole technology thing is always a dilemma like like how how super tech does a regenerative future have to be and and if it is so super tech, that's what i've realized a lot with this whole kind of COVID thing and and people getting into like even people who i would have thought are wiser <laughs> saying oh yeah let's just all be monitored by our smartphones and have um chinese style control eh? um i i just don't get that that people really believe that a that's a desirable future b there's a colonialism in that because there are lots of cultures that don't actually want to use smartphones all the time that don't want to have their lives ruled by a bunch of tokens that are zeros and ones in a virtual space. They're choosing to live the human experience and the human, like being human in different sets of relationships. 
And if we want to be regenerative, we need to create a diverse space where those people have equal rights to stand in the world and be active and have rights in the world without having to have a mobile phone based system and being plugged into the, the, the virtual world. For me, that's a big shadow that we're not talking about when we're, when we're bringing regenerative solutions into, into the world. We're, we're, I mean, living in the Bay Area and having a tech background, <laughs> um, what, what do you think of that? <laughs> The, I know, right? It's fascinating. The um, what do I think of that? I mean, my I, I yeah, I I I <laughs> well, there's no, there's, no, there's no obviously there's no easy answer to that uh, inquiry uh, <clears throat> because. Yeah, it's it, you're absolutely. You, it, you get an easy, easy way out, card. You can just say it's a dilemma, and, and <laughs> <laughs> it is a dilemma because I I totally agree with every word you just said. Uh, in I know, but I mean I I yeah. At some level, there is yeah there there is value in these things there is value in technology there is value in finance there are tools that we humans have created and amazing <laughs> good people smart people with a good heart really wanting yeah. to serve in those worlds i'm not yeah right and the pitfall and there are dangers to all of them where we, yeah i mean the, the 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 history of technological uh colonization uh and how that yeah i mean that is and um, the history of financial <laughs> colonization um <clears throat> is is quite uh yeah ridiculously large right I, and yeah how so and the nature of being human where we need where we, within an economic well and it can be argued that there there are only, you know, ec economics, human, humans have been em embedded in economic systems and have been creating, you know, inadvertently creating incentive mechanisms since we're, you know, since we were pre-human at some level. I mean, we see economic behaviors within animals, right? It's not just a human thing. We just now have created or at least for the last what three thousand years, have had these things that we refer to as money um, that we allow that allow us to exchange these totally abstract things between ourselves and account and you know and create accounting systems and whatever else that allow our economies to work in a at a in a different way. I, I you know. I could say at a, in a higher way, but I'm not. I don't. But it has some kind of implicit value judgment, and I'm not sure that, that should be there. So, if we have these kinds of incent incentive, at the end of the day, it comes down to human consciousness, right? Of how humans interact with these economic systems that have emerged around us. We can't, and all the digital tools are. That we're creating and these other financial structures are just in more refined ways of thinking about how economic activity and the natural world interrelate that become some of which becomes possible because of digital technologies um or at least the accounting part of that but yeah you know embedding human nature <laughs> within those macro accounting systems will lead to perverse behaviors, which won't, and yeah, which will lead to the kind of, you know, people going, oh yeah, we must do this natural accounting system with this digital technology here because it will whatever. That, 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 that's one of the big fallacies that I hear over and over again, that, that um, people say just because you design an, I'm, I'm all for designing as nature um, or doing biomimetic design and how many weapon systems have been designed with biomimetic 
examples uh, and how i mean so so basically you can turn i mean all technologies like that that can be turned to good or to evil um and um for me the the way that we like for example just today i had a conversation on on social media with somebody about the the whole like the venus project and, and jack fresnel's vision of the world uh, i i personally don't really want to live in a world where um some kind of hyper AI is measuring all forms of resources and all my activities and and I kind of run down a multiple scorecard of things up and down and up and down, but I have an equal share, but I'm completely basically plugged into this system. And it, it sort of assumes that there is a kind of benevolent of the scientists. Uh, it, it's always in, in, in Fresnel's kind of, oh yeah, that's good. Then no, I don't have to worry. It's the scientists. They're clever people. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit simplistic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, like which scientists? Um, it's <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 but, but in a similar way, I've, I've noticed this, like even here on Mallorca, I've had conversation with people around a campfire or in other settings where I thought, oh, this is my, he, I'm with my people. They're talking about supporting local farmers and, 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 and building a local economy and, and um, reconnecting with um, the story of place and, and, and the ancient um, myths of Mallorca and, and keeping them alive in the modern world. And all of that sounds nice. Yeah? And then suddenly you realize that in that circle, it's actually in a sort of right-wing return to the local um building lifeboats in a difficult world keeping the foreigners out and um i mean they're, they're subgroups here and they're very small yeah? but but what i'm saying is that in the bioregional impulse we also have to be aware that there is an underbelly of that relocalization and like if it's not done globally with global solidarity and global open knowledge exchange and support to both heal place and planet, then it very quickly can become of, oh no, we, we're just trying to get it right for us. We're just a bunch of, like I made a bunch of big movies in Hollywood and now I'm gonna buy half a valley in um, Argentina and and um, bring all my mates and have the best regenerative designers create a, a kind of tourist lodge that, that some people can pay me rent in um, to come and live in my lifeboat uh, um, kind of vision. I mean, that, that's, that's maybe not right wing, that's just, just ultra capitalist vision of bioregionalism. Yeah? But, but there are these other models that, that are actually not really um, truly regenerative um, from, from where I stand. Um, oh, no. uh, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we, could, we could go down such a deep rabbit hole. Yeah, we, we better not. Otherwise, like if we if we talk much much longer, then we'll definitely be done. Like we're, we're almost getting into the danger zone of you know. Bucky gave these talks where he would start in front of a big audience in, in some university somewhere, and um, then about ninety to one hundred and twenty minutes into it, when the first people had actually plugged up the courage of saying, "This guy isn't going to stop. I'm leaving." Yeah. <laughs> And then he would sort of look around and say, say people, well, now the people who are supposed to be here are still here. Um, we can get started. And then he'd go on for another two hours. <laughs> I don't think that might have worked in the 60s. I don't think it does anymore. <laughs> yeah, we've trained our attention spans to be far too. Uh, anyway, sure. re really nice to, to reconnect. And um, I'll, I'll put... I put this out on, on the Regeneration Rising, whatever it is, um, set of videos that I'm putting out on YouTube. Um, and, and I'll put the, the, the website is, I've got it here somewhere, what was it? Um, GRC.Earth. Ah, the same. You, you mentioned that folks from Common Earth are in there. Do you, do you mean like through RCN Stewart is in it or is, is Freya or anybody also in the collab? Uh, Freya's a yeah, Freya, oh, cool. as well as Stuart. Uh, nice. Yeah, Freya's, well, I love talking to Freya, Freya's fun. Um, excellent. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's the beauty, that it is actually a really nice global community. Um, there's sort of nuances of difference, of how, but, but that's great, that's our diversity, that's like as, as long as we keep um, 
engaging and 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 honoring multiple ways of seeing things it's it's just going to add strength and diversity to the network but it's difficult times like who knows where where all of this is going i'm i'm still like for me i'm still in that mode where i don't really want to make many comments about COVID-19 changing the world because it's still right in the middle of it. And um, we'll, we'll see where we end up. I mean, particularly your part of the world. <laughs> yeah, well, isn't, you know, the Spanish government are the ones who've been talking about universal basic income, right? Yeah. No, I mean, the, the, right, uh, briefly talked to you earlier about this, the, the potential where I live now, like on the one hand, all my work that was starting to try to position some of the openings in people in the tourism industry to a new way of working with things and say okay you still you're making lots of money with this tourism you can invest it in re-regionalization and building the infrastructure we will need in five to ten years to weather climate change and all the other changes well that's just gone out of the window um so, so like i think tourism isn't going to recover not even in the next three or four years if it recovers if the system that it sits in recovers, which is also still a big if, um, but but um, yeah, eighty percent dependency on tourism. So I'm, I, I live in a completely like I mean, basically the island is in ruins with regard to its economy, um, and that collapse, of course, could be terrific, but it could also be a terrific opportunity. Um, so we'll see. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the the first use of the word "terrific" there actually more around the original meaning around terror. Yeah, <laughs> I assume yeah, <laughs> terrific in the sense of oh my god, what has just ha yeah, what's happening here, right? I mean, lots of people are really really scared, and 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 also finding the balance because you can't really when 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 people are kind of shocked into a survival mode kind of red v meme cluster type spiral dynamically yeah um to come them with with high goals for humanity is it's just like there's a communication disconnect there yeah um so so it's it's how to build um with everybody out of this mess a, a future that isn't making the mistake of trying to rebuild what we had before because that was just running on fumes and about to collapse anyway yeah? so so interesting times uh, uh, <laughs> the chinese oh, no. first <laughs> well Have you read, did, did you read graham's book or oh, no i mean it was um great i know graham had a hand in writing it powerful times Eamon kelly's no nope. <laughs> yeah i i should it's sitting in my bookshelf downstairs i feel like i should actually I crack it open and, i haven't read it yet but i i um I like the, the short little books that Graham and, and Maureen and like the IFF has put out a number of really nice short little books that yeah. are quite inspirational. Anyway, I, I probably should take my daughter to bed and, and spe oh. spend some time playing with her before. Yes, you should. Yes. Um, <laughs> really, really nice to see you again. And yeah. um, let's stay in touch. Yeah. Have a, have a, day. <laughs> have a nice evening. Okay.